welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. If you are new here, hi, my name is Nishita. On my channel, you will find a lot of product reviews, mainly foundations, sometimes makeup tutorials and also get ready with me. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Today's video, I'm going to do a review and three looks using the new Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Palette. I think she uh, started her makeup line with this palette sometime last year, uh, end of, I think in December, I don't remember the exact date. Uh, but you know, she had a free shipping like last month in February and I ordered it and I've had like a good two to three weeks to test this palette out. So in today's video, first I'm going to do swatches of the palette, tell you guys my thoughts, like all the pros and cons that I find with this palette. And then I will also show you guys three makeup looks, I mean, three eyeshadow looks that I created using this palette. So you can see them in action, uh, you know, as to how they blend out on the eyelids and all of that. So this is how the packaging looks like. So you have Tati Beauty, like volume one right here. One thing I will say though, since, you know, uh, the material of the packaging is in such a way that the packaging gets dirty pretty easily. You can actually, you know, take a makeup wipe and clean this uh, palette. It's not a big deal, but I'm just letting you guys know. So this is how the palette looks like inside. As you can see, hello, that's me. As you can see, you get a huge mirror with this and this is how the eyeshadows look like. So you have four different rows in here. One uh, is all matte. The second row right here uh, is called sequin shadows. So there is like small glitter particles here and there inside uh, like, you know, embedded into a matte shadow. Whereas this one is a metallic row and this one is pure glitter. It's like pressed glitter. So you can see the sparkle on this. So she doesn't have like names under each eyeshadow, but she has names under each column. First one is Poet. The second one is Aura. Then we have Soothe, Story, Ritual and Memory. So each row, uh, kind of like a family, if you will. So these are all like, you know, family of pink. These are all like, you know, family of beige, like or white. Uh, this is like a silver glitter and then you have this perfect transition row especially like this is my favorite transition color in the palette and i think if you look at it this is like the only first transition color uh that uh you know this palette has so if you have lighter skin tones this might be too deep for a transition so that's the advantage of having a white base shadow so you can mix these two together and create a lighter transition color if you have you know lighter skin tones uh, and then we have like, you know, uh, this, uh, I want to say like rusty orange color family. And then we have our brown and then the blacks. So first I'm going to show swatches of all the eyeshadows. Then I'll tell you guys like my experience with it, my thoughts on it, pros and cons. So you can make an informed decision whether, you know, this palette is something you would want to invest in. So let's jump into the swatches first. First we have the memory lane, the matte, the sequin, metallic and the glitter. This is the ritual. I'm only dipping my finger into the eyeshadow just once, but you know, the pigment payoff is like really awesome. Here comes story. We have the Rose Suit. Then we have the Rose Aura. Last but not the least, we have Poet. So there are definitely pros and cons with this palette. I'm not like stating any prices or anything. I will list all that in the description box down below. Like, you know, uh, how much you're paying for each gram and all of that. So first of all, the pan size on this is really big. Uh, like, you know, let me compare it with, you know, other eyeshadow palette that I have here. This is the Anastasia palette. As you can see, the pan size of this is very less when compared to this one. Uh, this one retails for, I think, $42 or something. Whereas this one retails for $48, which I know is up there, but you do get a lot of... Uh, product uh, when compared to other eyeshadow palette. The mirror is of really nice quality. 
So, you know, the main price is going into the quality of the eyeshadows and also the packaging. She didn't like, you know, make any compromise anywhere when it comes to the quality of this eyeshadow palette. Let me, you know, say that up front. So the shadows blend out beautifully. Even if you're a beginner who just started getting into eyeshadows, you will have no trouble blending out these eyeshadows. That's how beautifully and easily these blend. And one more thing is that uh, I'll probably be able to show you guys. You do have a little bit of kick up uh, when you dip your brush into the, uh, you know, uh, pan. But personally, that doesn't bother me because, you know, the creamier and the more buttery the eyeshadows are, uh, they tend to be powdered, but they blend beautifully on your eyes. The same case with this palette as well. Even though there is kick up, that personally doesn't bother me because they perform really well on your eyes. And you don't need to use a lot of product just a little bit of eyeshadow goes a really long way like slightly tap your brush into it and start blending it out you will get amazing pigment payoff uh, when an eyeshadow is of really high pigment sometimes when you try to blend it out onto your eyelids it can be a little bit difficult because you know right off the bat you have this so much of pigment and now you have to blend it out whereas with this product even though the eyeshadows are really pigmented they blend out beautifully with like you know no effort whatsoever uh, and what else? Uh, like my favorite part about this palette is the glitter right here. The formula of this pressed glitter is amazing. Like, you know, first of all, they are very sparkly. And second of all, even when you try to like, you know, apply it on your eyes, you don't need to use any glitter glue or any base underneath because, you know, the glitter is pressed in a way such that it will stick to your bare eyelids really well when you have like a primer or a concealer underneath. Uh, whereas like, you know, the pressed glitter in Colourpop eyeshadows, let me show you guys an example. So this is the Colourpop Sweet Talk palette. This is one of my favorite palettes and they do have like this pressed glitter inside. So let's look at this. This one is very chunky and it doesn't have a really nice base underneath which will make it easy for it to stick to your eyelids. Especially they fly everywhere. It's very hard to get an even application when you apply them onto your eyelids because you know uh, the formula itself is not that great. But whereas the Tati Beauty glitter is really good. Like when you press this onto your eyelids, it stays put. It's easy to blend out. It gives you like amazing pigment where you want it. Whereas this glitter, it tends to fly everywhere. For formula like this, it would work better when you have a glitter glue underneath. But when Whereas with this one, you don't need that because, you know, the base of the glitter itself makes it easier for the glitter to stick to your eyeshadows really well. Glitter Row is the standout part to me in this eyeshadow palette. Like, you know, I can see myself like doing a lot of Indian looks using the Glitter Row itself because, you know, just have any metallic base eyeshadow, then just tap off a little bit of glitter on top. It will take your eyeshadow to the next level. Uh, so I really love that kind of sparkle on my eyes. So if you attend a lot of Indian weddings, if you love to play with glitter, just because of this row, this palette will be worth it for you, let me tell you guys. And uh, coming to the metallics, I feel like they're a little bit underwhelming. Um, how should I explain this? I, it's not in a bad way. I think that the main reason why she created this palette, like one of the main reasons why she created this palette, so it will perform like very good on matured eyes as well. Uh, sometimes if the eyeshadow is really metallic, we all have lines on them. So as we get older, the lines get more prominent. So when you put metallic eyeshadows on them, they will, they won't, you know, uh, flatter the wrinkles that you have on your eyes. So that's the main reason why she created this very smooth metallic formula. So which is like a really good thing if you have matured eyes and if you want to go for a subtle uh, metallic eyeshadow. But for me personally, I love my metallics to be a little bit more intense. Whereas uh, this metallic eyeshadow row is not as intense as I personally prefer. But the formula is very smooth, very buttery. They blend out like a dream. Uh, there is, you know, no crumbliness. It does, you don't get a lot of fallout with the metallic eyeshadows. They're just very smooth and very, uh, like you can feel the quality when you swatch them. Uh, but it's just that they're not those intense metallic eyeshadows. So if you want to add that intensity to your eyeshadow look, after the metallic, you have the glitter. For me personally, I would have preferred the metallic row to be a little bit more intense uh, and then also have the glitter on top, so why not? So that's like one thing I want to mention, but if you're someone who doesn't like to wear extra metallic eyeshadow looks, this row would be perfect for you. Coming to the sequin row, this has to be my least favorite part of the eyeshadow palette because I just cannot get them to work on my eyelids. I mean, I'm not saying the quality is bad, the quality is really good, but the point is you do see like tiny specks of glitter when you swatch them like this, but when you tap them onto your fingers, uh, the like, you know, the sheen will be there, 
But as soon as you start to blend it out, all the glitter, the tiny specks of glitter, they just fly away. I don't see the glitter on my eyes anymore with the sequin eyeshadows. So I don't see a point of them because, you know, if you take out the glitter particles that are embedded into the eyeshadow, they're pretty much a sister to the bottom row. Even when you try to press them on, I don't see the, you know, glitter particles all that much. So this particular row kind of feels like redundant to me and I can't get like a lot of use of them. So if it were up to me, I probably would get rid of this row, uh, just the personal preference and just have three rows, reduce the price of the palette even more Then that would be like an amazing palette. Or, uh, you know, have like more transition colors in here uh, that are, you know, lighter than this one. It's probably a light uh, berry pink, probably a light rusty orange, probably a very light, light brown. So that could work as like, you know, good neutral transition shades. For me personally, I'm not a big fan of the sequin row. And coming to the mattes, they're perfect. They're just a beautiful matte formula, especially this black right here. Uh, it's one of the best black mattes out there in any palette. It's like, you know, not every brand gets this matte black shadow, right? It's very pigmented. It blends beautifully, clears beautifully on top of other eyeshadows. You won't see any patchiness when blending it out. This is like perfect. It's the right amount of pigmentation. It's very intense. So whenever you want to add that extra intensity or smoke out your lower lash line even more for the night looks, this black would be amazing. Uh, the brown is really good. Like all the matte shadows are really good. I have no complaint there whatsoever. And coming to the color family, I think it's beautiful. It's very innovative. Like these days in the markets, we are seeing like everything is saturated. So a brand comes out with a palette. It'll be, I look at it and be like, eh, it's okay, it's good. But I already have like, you know, colors like that in my collection. So I don't need to go out and buy that new palette. But whereas this one, it's very innovative. It's different. Because, you know, if you're a beginner, if you're a regular consumer who don't like to like wear a lot of eyeshadows, just want to keep an eyeshadow palette for uh, events, you don't have to think a lot as to how to create an eyeshadow look with this. Pick up this transition shade, apply it all over your crease, then stick to just one color family. Like you can stick to this row and create like an intense glittery metallic smoky eye. Or if you don't want to use the glitter, just stick to this and this. You will create like a perfect black smoky eye. Same goes here. This is the only row I used today. And of course, this has a transition shade. So I got this pink halo glittery eye. So you can stick to one family. You don't have to think a lot as to, you know, what transition shade that I use, what metallic shade should I go for? So it's all laid out for you. So it's very, like I must say, user friendly. So that is one very innovative part about this eyeshadow palette. And like, it's, it's hard to come up with something very new and innovative these days because, you know, we have seen everything at this point. But whereas I think she did a really good job in the layout of the palette because it makes it very easier for regular consumers to use. And being said that, this palette, either you will get a lot of use out of it or second part, you might not reach for it all that often. Because like I said, if you are someone who doesn't like to apply glitter on your eyeshadows, if you don't like to work with glitter, this entire row will go to waste. And for me personally, I love this palette because of the glitter row. I hope I'm making sense. Like I don't wear glitter on a day-to-day -day basis, but whenever I'm going clubbing or whenever I'm going to any events where I want my eyes to really stand out, I can see myself using this glitter a lot. Whereas if you, if I want to get like an intense metallic smoky eye, to be honest, this would not be the first metallic row I would reach for because for, personally for my liking, these are not as metallic as I would like. I feel like uh, I don't think I will get a lot of use out of this row. So those are my thoughts on each specific row. All in all, I think it's a great palette. The quality is top notch for $48. The packaging, the quality of the eyeshadows, it's just amazing. And, you know, not one shadow that I can point and say this went on patchy. This didn't blend out as easily as I would like. No, every eyeshadow in this blends out beautifully. The formula is perfect. Like, I know I keep saying that, but the quality of this eyeshadows is just top notch. But again, uh, it depends on personal preference. So if you like glitter, go for it. If you don't, I have to skip it. Because if you are not going to use the glitter, you can find all these like you know metallic eyeshadows probably in your existing eyeshadow palettes so if you want like one eyeshadow palette that you want to invest in where you have like good amount of warm neutrals i want to say i'd say definitely give this palette a try like it's like a bang for your buck uh you will get a lot of variety you can do a lot of eyeshadow looks with this so especially if you're a makeup artist i think this would be like a great investment for you because you know you have your matte black you have good transition shades and then you have glitters you have metallics 
so it will be perfect for you but if you're a regular consumer who doesn't like to wear glitter a lot i would just skip it you don't need this for me personally i think i invested good because i love the glitters and i can see myself like you know reaching for them a lot whereas the sequin shadow is completely waste for me so that's like my personal experience with it uh, for me if i reach for this palette i most likely end up uh, applying glitter on my eyelids on oh let's talk about the glitter fallout so usually when you apply glitter even with the glitter glue Glitter is something that it will fly away and will create a little bit of fallout. So I've used some other pressed pigments and glitters where you have like you know a lot of fallout on your face throughout the day. But whereas with this one, the fallout is very minimal. It's barely noticeable unless you come up really close and find specks of glitter underneath my eyes. So the longevity is really amazing. Like they stay on your eyes unless you actually remove them with a you know makeup remover or you know when you take your makeup off at the end of the night. So the longevity is there. Starting off with look number one, taking the shade Sooth, uh, the matte version and applying that pretty much everywhere in my crease. This is going to be my first transition shade and I'm going to slowly build up until I get the intensity that I want. Then I'm going to take this metallic shade in the Raw Ritual. I'm applying this all over my lid and at the same time I'm carving out where I want my lid space to end. Once I have my outline, I'm just going to go in with my fingers. Once I laid down the color, I'm going to take the first transition brush that I used and blend out the edges so there are no harsh ends. Now I'm going to take this matte brown shade in the column ritual and apply this in the outer corners and blend it in with the shimmery shadow at the same time and with whatever is left on the brush I'm going to drag the color into my socket I want to deepen up the outer corners even more for that I'm taking the matte black shadow in the column memory on a pencil brush and first start at the lash line Now for the fun part, I'm going to take this brown glitter from the column ritual on my fingers because I saw that these glitters are best applied with fingers and apply it wherever I had applied the shimmery shadow from the same column. I just cut up some Ardell uh, Demi recipes off camera and applied them onto my eyes. Then I'm going to take this white base shadow in the column Aura and apply that to my brow bone. Moving on to lower lash line, first I'm going to take the shade Soothe and buff it out. Then I'm taking the shade Ritual and do the exact same thing but I'm not gonna diffuse it as low as I did with the shade Ritual. And then I'm going to take the matte black shadow memory and mainly concentrate that on the outer V of my lower lash line. And that completes our look number one. Moving on to look number two. First, I'm going to take the shade uh, Story in the matte row and start applying that in my outer V. And with whatever is left, I'm going to drag that into the crease. Then I'm taking like a flat shader brush and picking up the shade Aura in the metallic row and apply that in the inner one-third lid space. Once I have the outline, I'm just going to use my fingers to get the maximum pigment out of it. Then I took the sequin shade in the column story 
and on my fingers i started placing that at the corner of the shimmery shadow but to be honest this step totally felt unnecessary because you know uh, as soon as i started blending it out all the you know sequins all the tiny sparks of glitter completely vanished so you know you could probably do this look without using that shade at all but i just wanted to show you guys i feel like is one of the cons uh, with this palette uh, the sequin shades like the sparkle is nice but as soon as you start blending it out all the you know tiny glitters they just blend away then i decided to take the metallic shade from the column story and apply that right in between uh, the transition shade and the first shimmery shade that i used on the lid then i'm going to take a little bit of the matte brown uh, from the column ritual and apply that in the outer ease of my eye just to add some definition like you can see on the other eye moving on to lower lash line i'm going to take the first transition shade and buff that out on my lower lash line and also join it with the upper half and get to the corners then i'm going to take the brown shadow that i used uh, to deepen up the outer corners and do this exact same thing on the lower lash line as well but this one i'm keeping it closer to the lash line i'm not going to go as low as i did with the orange shade before then i'm going to apply some ardil falsies of camera and be right back complete look to let's move on to look number 3 First, I'm gonna go in with the soot matte shade and apply this all over the crease. Then I'm going to take the poet matte shadow and start working this in my inner and outer corners. Then, on a flat shaded brush, I'm going to take the poet metallic eye shadow and apply this on the centers of the lid. and then taking the matte memory black shadow and applying that in the inner and outer corners to deepen up the halo effect even more and then i'm going to take the glitter poet shadow and apply this right on top of that metallic eye shadow then taking the aura sequin shadow and highlight my brow bone i'm going to apply some liner and lashes of camera i'll be right back okay lashes are on so i'm going to move on to lower lash line first i'm going to take the shade uh, poet the matte shadow and puff this all over my lower lash line then taking the matte black and applying this very closer to the lash line So that's the end of the video. Those are my thoughts on the Tati Beauty Texture Neutrals palette. Uh, all in all, for me personally, I love it. Uh, I can see myself using it a lot. So for me, it's worth the money. So it depends on what preferences you have with your eyeshadow finishes. Like if you want metallics or if you want glitters, you either will love it or not. So if you don't like glitter, uh, I'll just skip it. You don't need this palette. But if you are someone who loves glitter. and you are looking for that particular formula which is very easy to apply on your eyes i would definitely give this one a try so that completes this review i hope it was helpful if you liked it please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching i'll see you all in my next one bye